Hello students, welcome to the grammar classes. Today we are going to discuss about noun cases. There are three major cases in English grammar, which are nominative, objective and the possessive cases. Here in this class, we are going to discuss about the nominative and the objective cases. About the possessive cases, we shall discuss in the next class. Let us look into what are called nominative cases. Nominative means a subjective case or the naming. Our name can be a noun, it can be a, it can also be a pronoun. Our noun can be a single word noun, a common subject or a noun phrase. So, the question is that how can one understand about the nominative or the subjective case in a sentence? Simple, we have already discussed about the subject and the predicate. The subject is identified by asking a question, who or what with the verb, then we can clearly understand about the, which is the subject. Now let us look into what is called a nominative or a subjective case. A noun is the nominative case if it is the subject of a verb. When a noun, that is a single word noun can be a compound subject or a noun phrase can be called a, a subject. And a pronoun can also come as a subject. It is in the nominative case if it is the subject of a verb. That is the subject. I am playing. She is a good girl. Boys are playing. So in those cases, who is playing? Who is? I am. Who are? Boys are. So by placing the question who or what with the main verb, we may get the subject. So let us look into some of the examples to make the topic clear, make that idea clear. Boys are playing in the ground. So we have already discussed that who or what plus verb will give you the subject of the sentence. Boys are playing. Who are playing? Boys. You will get the subject or the nominative case, boys. A beautiful and smart girl won the first prize. Who won the first prize? A beautiful and smart girl. A beautiful and smart girl. Girl is the hard word. And it is a noun phrase. A beautiful and smart girl is a noun phrase. Where girl is the hard word. So this is a noun phrase. Boys and girls are working together. Boys and girls. And connecting boys and girls. So it is called a compound subject. So compound subject it means subject can be a noun or a pronoun. It can be a single word. It can be a noun phrase. It can be more than one nouns. So now let us move into the objective case. Objective case means in the objective case we are discussing about the objective case, dative case and the accusative case. So all the three are related to the objects. One is about the direct object, other is about the indirect object and the third one is about the proposition plus noun that is the object. Objective case. A noun is in the objective case if it is the direct object of a verb. Direct and the indirect objects. Direct objects are general things. And indirect objects are the nouns and pronouns used for human beings. So the nouns and pronouns used for other things are called the direct objects and are the other things that is the human beings. The nouns and the pronouns used for human beings are considered as the indirect objects. A noun or pronoun that receives the action, that is a verb, that is subject's action passes to the object, then it is called a direct object. A noun is in the objective case if it is the direct object of a verb. So that is verb plus who or what. Verb plus who or what. By asking, by putting up a question with the verb, whom or what. Let us look into the examples to make the idea clear. A baker bakes cakes. A baker. Who? Who bakes? A baker. Subject. Cakes. Baker bakes. Work plus whom? Or what? Bakes. What? Baker bakes. What? You will get the answer. Cakes. The direct object. I called the carpenter. My verb is called. I called the carpenter. Called whom? The carpenter object. So the subject sanction passes to the object. Such cases are called the 
object is case. Now let us look into the dative case. The dative case, the receiver, that is the direct object's action is received by the indirect object. Such a case is called the dative case. So in the objective case, the action done by the verb, otherwise the subject's action passes to the object. That object's whatever the object is receiving, that is passed to the indirect object or in the dative case. So, a noun is in the dative case if it is the indirect object of the verb. A indirect object means generally human beings. Most of the cases human beings are the nouns and pronouns related to the human beings or connected or used for the human beings are used as indirect objects. The verb. I gave him a gift. When we read this sentence, I gave a gift to him. So, the subject's action gave, I gave a gift. This is the direct object. And the direct object is passed to him. I gave a gift to him. So, this him is the indirect object. Such a case is called the dative case. That is a noun that receives the direct object. With the person to or for whom the action is done. So, here a gift is being given to him. We can understand this by asking the question to or for. Or whom or who with the verb. I gave what? A gift. To whom? To him. So, this is the indirect object. This is the direct object. So, direct objects are generally things, animals, nouns and pronouns related to it. Whereas, human beings, indirect objects are in most of the cases, the human beings and the nouns and the pronouns related to the human beings. Now, let us look into the second example. She cooked her children a pizza. She cooked her action. She cooked what? A pizza. And pizza, that pizza goes to her children. For whom? For her children. So, this type of cases are called the dative cases. Here in the objective case, we talk about the direct object. And in the dative case, we talk about the indirect object. In the direct object, most of the cases, direct objects are things. And indirect objects are human beings, the nouns and pronouns used for human beings. It means, direct object means the action directly passes to the object, whereas the indirect object is the receiver of that action. It means when we do something, that is I made, I gave a gift, that gift is given to him. It means that direct object action, otherwise that is passed to, otherwise received by the indirect object. Now, let us look into the accusative case. Accusative case also, objective case, direct, indirect. Here the noun is coming after a proposition. Then what is the proposition? Proposition is a word used before a noun or a pronoun and that proposition tells us about what is the relation of that noun or pronoun with the balanced part of the sentence. Here, Accusative case means if a noun is in the objective case, comes after a proposition, then it is called an accusative case, symbol. Here also object, here also object, here is also as an object, but the only the difference is that it comes after the proposition. Now let us look into it. A mouse was killed by a cat. So here a cat, that is the agent shown with the by that is a proposition a proposition is used here therefore in this this is called a accusative case a cat cat is object a cat killed a mouse that is a real sentence a cat killed a mouse but in this we have used a proposition to show the agent i write with a pen a pen is used by me for writing so a mouse was killed by a cat in this case, a cat killed a mouse. That is a real sentence. Here also you see, 
I called the carpenter. The carpenter is called by me. Here you have to understand that if it is a noun, that noun will never change in the subjects or objects place. They, that will remain the same. The noun may not take a change in its form if it is the nominative case or in the objective case. But when we use the pronouns, they change. I called the carpenter. If I write it, the, if I am taking the carpenter as the subject, the carpenter will remain as it is. The carpenter is called by me. But this I call it change. That is the subjective form is converted to the objective form me. A mouse was killed by a cat. A cat killed the mouse or killed a mouse. In this case, the cat and the mouse are remaining as it is. So, from this it is clear, if the nouns are placed either in the subject's place or in the object's place, they may not get a change. But if you are using the pronouns in the subject's or the object's place, they will change accordingly. So, just go through the topic once again. And if you have any doubt, don't forget to ask me. And in the next class, we shall discuss about the possessive cases. Thank you and have a nice day.